Hello, everybody. Today we are talking about when love is an illusion, and when it's real, and when love is an illusion that walks us down a path towards a deeper understanding of love and a more authentic kind of love. And when I was about 15 years old, it was the first year of high school, and I was in a new school with a lot of people I didn't know, and there was this one girl, this one young woman, who I had no friends in common with, I didn't have any classes with her, I wasn't even sure if we were in the same grade, um, there was no ways that our lives overlapped, except we would regularly walk past each other in the hallway, right where my locker was. I think her locker must have been kind of in the same part of the school. It was a big school, so um, the fact that we crossed paths with each other regularly was a very fortunate and unlikely turn of events. Because every time I walked past th this girl, I, um, I would feel this rush of euphoric attraction. There was something about her. And she was not stereotypically, by our society's standards, a classically attractive person, but there was something about her, both physically and her countenance, and I guess maybe the energy that she had or something. It was so captivating to me. And um, she seemed like alternative not like kind of a little bit punky but not not totally punk um there was just something about her that seemed almost like um a fairy or something i mean like a forest fairy like a magical creature there is uh, a quality to her that seemed very rarefied in its magic and um uniqueness and beauty and magnificence and every time I walked past her it was like I was suddenly spontaneously injected with all of these drugs that made me feel fucking amazing it felt so extraordinary like my heart was exploding and my body was just filled with these wonderful swooning blissed out feelings and this and she remained a complete enigma to me like a total mystery i didn't know her name um i didn't know anything about her except this energy and then you know i had fantasies about who she was just like i fantas i just i built up who she might be in my head i couldn't help it i felt these this kind of like glorious ecstatic divine feeling every time i walked past her so I couldn't help but daydream about here about her. And also, it was the highlight of my day every day, crossing paths with this enigmatic, beautiful, fairy-like woman. And eventually, I noticed that she was noticing me, and we would make eye, con we would make eye contact whenever we walked past each other. And it was intense. She was like really making eye contact and I was a very shy kid. I'm still pretty, I'm still basically a shy kid. And it was super intense having all of those feelings and now having that person like looking at me and kind of non-verbally communicating like, hey, how you doing? Want to hang out? <laughs> and there was no part of me that even conceived of the possibility of approaching this stranger and talking to them. No part. Even though I would look forward to seeing her every day and fantasize about it and think, oh my god, this woman is like, or this girl is like, like this, I, I, this extraordinary perfect being. Um... No matter how excited I was, I was far, far too shy to actually even consider approaching this person. And eventually, um, one morning before school, I was in the school's library, probably trying to do some homework I hadn't done for my first class, and 
lo and behold, the angelic um, crush of mine sits down at the table beside the table I'm sitting at with another guy, and I think they were working on homework together on an assignment or something. And I'm sitting there, I'm nervous as hell, I'm like, holy shit, she's here. She probably thinks I'm a chump because I've never come up and talked to her. And, um, but then something very magnificent happens, totally shocking. And she's, well, she begins to speak and I hear her voice for the very first time. And I swear, basically the moment I heard her speaking, the entire fantasy that I had built up around this girl completely collapsed. It was like a balloon that popped, and it was just, it was done. It was over. Because her voice revealed the personality of a person who was not the fantasy I had built up in my head at all. Not even kind of, sort of. Um, like I said, my, my fantasy of this person was kind of like, kind of like they were like a magical pixie, which sounds so embarrassing to say. And it sounds like such a um, objectification of somebody too, which it obviously was. Um, maybe, maybe a more accurate depiction of the idea of who I thought this person was is that I thought that they were a very gentle, kind, um, sensitive type of person. And their voice revealed someone who was quite a bit more rough and rugged and um, harsh. And, and I would later get to, like, kind of peripherally, just through being in classes with this person, I never got to know them personally, but I got to... Um, get to know about them a little bit more. And uh, yeah, they were more rough and tumble than um, what I had projected onto them. And, and there was something so profound for me as a 15-year-old in that instant that I could go from feeling some of the most intense and profound feelings I'd ever felt in my lifetime up to that point, towards this person. And in three seconds, probably, of hearing them speak for the first time, those feelings were gone. The feelings, like, the whole charade was destroyed, just like that. And um, for some time after this, in, in the following days, weeks, and maybe even months, I... Uh, I reflected on this. It was a fascinating phenomenon that I could feel something so strong um, that I thought was her. Like, I thought that these huge things I was feeling, and they felt monumental, they felt life-changing. Whatever I had been feeling inside, I was convinced that it was real. Even though the person I'd been infatuated with um, wasn't at all who I thought they were. In the aftermath of that, I was like, but I know what I was feeling was a real thing. That, it felt more real than anything else. These, it felt like those feelings were so strong and so intense that you could feel them and they would make you capable of doing extraordinary things. It's like they're this power source. And so I was convinced that the feelings were real, even though my infatuation, my infatuation was clearly an illusion. And so in my 15-year-old in my mind, the only thing that made sense was that somehow what I had been feeling, see, I thought initially that it had to do with her that every time I walked past her in the hallway, I was in the presence of this rarefied being, and therefore I felt all these extraordinary feelings, because I was witnessing this person, this, this glorious thing that 
that I kind of got um, affected by. But after hearing her voice and realizing that, whoa, that's not who I thought it was and I don't feel drawn to that actual person, um, as bad as that sounds, it was just the truth of, of my experience. Having realized that, I was like, well, I think that those feelings that I was feeling must just live inside of me then. Like that I had seen something attractive in that girl, and then these feelings that live inside of me, they got all excited and stirred up, and then I thought that they were about her. Like, I, I, uh, I didn't know about the psychological concept of projection at the time, but I, that's what I found out about during, because I was analyzing my own experience, and I, and I realized that there's this feeling of love and this sense of beauty and purity. That's got to be in me. Some, that's got to be part of me. And then when I saw her, I thought it was her. But that's not even who she is. She's a completely different person. And I have this stuff inside of me that feels amazing. And, and that actually lives inside of me. It was a very... <laughs> profound thing that I'm probably still um, figuring out many, many years later. The idea that um, the beauty and divinity that I would be so moved by in another might actually be a feeling that lives inside of me that they're reminding me of that they're activating inside of me. It's quite the extraordinary thing. And that was my first initiation to that concept, I guess, the concept of projection, which, you know, many years later I would learn about. And I'd be like, aha, I know, I know about that. I've been doing that for a long time. Projection, of course, being when we have a part of ourselves that usually we aren't living out, we aren't embodying, or we have disowned, sometimes because we're ashamed of it, um, or sometimes because we just ha don't have a reference point for it. I don't think I was ashamed of holding that kind of beauty inside of myself, but I was a 15-year-old skater kid. I hung out with friends who we would just like smoke weed and say fart jokes and stuff there wasn't this sense of like inner connection to divinity and sanctity although that was a part of awakening it that experience of being infatuated with that girl i mean in the years that followed that thing that feeling it became actually a really active thing and it, it became an active force in my life that i that actually like led choices and um, that I started to develop an actual real relationship with. So I guess that's an example of like, you know, I probably felt like, whoa, like, is this what being in love with someone feels like when I was so infatuated by that girl in the hallways? There's no doubt in my mind that as a 15 year old, I would have been like, whoa, I think I'm in love with this person, even though I'm afraid to talk to them. Um, but that was, you know, my, my understanding of love at the time. And then as soon as I hear her speak, that all shatters. And I'm like, what? That was an illusion. But it actually woke something up in me. And and I think the, the, the same thing has happened many times throughout my life. About 10 years later, um, I was briefly seeing um, a young woman. And again, I was extremely excited about this person. Um, and this was different because I did hear her voice. And, <laughs> and it made me even more excited about her. And... We, um, we hadn't been seeing each other very long when she started bringing up when we were making out or being intimate together, 
she started mentioning these pretty dark fantasies and fetishes that she wanted to play out. And the first time that this happened, uh, it's like we were making out or something and she brought up, she was, she wanted me to do something that felt very twisted and morbid to me. And my first reaction was, um, there was this like really innocent part of me that just felt heartbroken. It felt like, and I don't, I'm not saying that this was correct or anything. It's just the feelings that it brought up in me. It felt like someone was revealing a trauma and I didn't have any great understanding. Like, I don't think I had really read anything about psychology at this point in my life, but somehow I have this inner like armchair philosopher or psychologist that just has lived inside of me since I was 15 apparently or younger um and when she made this request that felt very twisted this innocent part of me he felt heartbroken and sad like someone had revealed a trauma and they wanted to eroticize it and fetishize it and have their kind of fun with it And all he felt was just real compassion and tenderness. It was so not a turn on. Um, He just wanted to love this person and just stop everything and say, hey, what happened? Are you okay? And that's not at all what what she wanted to do. Um, And... And I'm not saying I understand any of it and that one thing is right and one thing is wrong, but that's what it brought up in me because, um, yeah, I guess because that wasn't part of my sexuality and there wasn't things in my life experience that would have made it part of my sexuality. Now, even, and, and it just made me feel kind of like sad and compassionate and I think the first time it came up, it literally felt like someone had kicked me in the gut because it was so shocking. I just, and also I hadn't really encountered that type of sexuality yet. As life went on, I would discover that that's a big part of a lot of people's sexuality, that there's so many different ways um, of of experiencing pleasure mixed with pain and all of that. Um, But my immediate kind of like inner child reaction to that was one of sadness and compassion and certainly not um, erotic excitement. And um, it was confusing because I wanted to be with this person. I wanted them to like me, but I had all these complicated feelings about this very fundamental aspect of a romantic connection with her and for a while I just tried to like shove those feelings aside and um tried my best to become who I thought she would want me to be and that didn't work for very long um we only were seeing each other for a short period and partially because um yeah, it just it just didn't really make sense. But a part but a part of me found it very difficult to admit that. And I think in that in that scenario um I really wanted to make myself someone different from who I actually was so that I could receive love. And I also wanted to imagine that the person I was interested in was someone different than who she actually was. I wasn't really accepting that, hey, this person is sacred, they're amazing, they're beautiful, and you two are a total mismatch in this area. It's just as simple as that. It's not that there's any right or wrong, better or worse. It's just that you all are fucking different animals in this area. And you're both awesome. You both are bringing, like, super amazing, awesome stuff. But, um, it was, like, super, super hard 
for me to let go of the idea of who I thought that person was and actually accept who she really was and also to admit who I was because again my desire for love and my fear of rejection were great barriers to simple honesty and authenticity in that in that connection and i guess i'm sharing those two stories because there's kind of a common thread between the two of me allowing myself to build up an idea of who someone was and forming uh, an infatuation or a love built on that illusion and i have um i have a sign on the wall of my apartment that says only love is real and i think it is a very wonderful affirmative statement to remind myself of and it's also kind of a um a theory of human existence and human experience to me the idea that only love is real that even hatred at its core has um the desire for love or some kind of wound from a lack of love um that that makes it what it is that everything even love's opposite has love at its core um and and both of the stories that i shared to me those experiences and many others have been like um kind of like a mirage in a desert a mirage is like the illusion of water and on a very hot day and it's like those experiences were mirages where i thought what i was seeing was this extraordinary divine thing that i've wanted my whole life this love this ex- this this union um and i walk out into the middle of the desert the middle of the barren wasteland because i see the water there the essence that i want to experience so much and then i get there and hey that was an illusion and now i'm further into the wasteland i'm stranded here and i'm feeling more devastated and empty than before and the opportunity with that of course as that is that i can find the well inside of myself i can find the thing i was searching for outside of me on the inside and i know that probably sounds kind of cliche it's also kind of the most awesome thing that can possibly happen <laughs> learning how to feel like a, a sense of stable strong inner love self-love um that you can carry into the wasteland into these human relationships i mean it's just amazing and it also gives the otherwise disappointing experiences um a pretty extraordinary context that they're ushering us in to a deeper sense of maturity to a deeper sense of self-love and also a deeper ability to respect others and to love others and to honor others and to be authentic and that brings me to the final part of this which is i thought it would be fun to share three personal um red flags that i look for when i'm feeling intense excitement infatuation or love towards another three things i look for to give me some pause to reflect on there might be warning signs of something being askew and uh and the first of those three things is if i feel an excitement or a love with another person and it feels really unstable like it if it feels like something that could be taken away at any moment if if the love feels yeah like if the love 
doesn't feel calm or grounded or stable, if it feels like something I need to cling to for dear life, eh, it's something to maybe watch out for. <laughs> and on the other hand, when it feel when there's a love with another person that I feel and it's really calm and stable and it feels secure and it feels like even if the parameters of our relationship change, there's some sense of respect and trust and kindness that can make a deep part of me relax. That's a pretty cool thing to feel. The second thing that I look out for is if this feeling of excitement or love that I have for someone makes me feel really small. And it makes me feel smaller than the other person. And it makes me feel like I'm really looking up to them. And that uh, there's this real sense of separateness. Instead of us feeling like peers and equals and really connected, even, in, even though we're really different, because most of us are really different from each other, if there's a sense of being less than, of needing to kind of like reach up or grasp, uh, that's, a, that's a suspicious thing right there. And then the third and final thing that I look for is if I feel like I need to change who I am in order to receive love from the other person. If I feel like I need to change who I am in order to receive love from the other person, that is a problem. And if I feel like by being fully honest that I will be rejected by that person, oof, that is not going to be a healthy situation. And of course, I could feel that and probably all of the three things I just listed because the person who I'm with will actually not accept me and will reject me if I'm truly honest about who I am. Or I might feel that just because I'm carrying a lot of shame from my past, and this person might be extremely accepting, and, um, and I just have a lot of fear from my past experiences that has nothing to do with them. So, um, yeah, it's just good stuff for me personally to pay attention to and then to uh, figure out if, um, if what's going on has more to do with me and my feelings or if it has to do with something that's actually here in the present moment. Anyhow, love is amazing. Love is the only thing that's real. And sometimes when... Um, we build up an illusion that we think is love, it can walk us into a fertile garden of understanding love in a much deeper way. Illusions can be wonderful like that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, let me know. Give it a like or give it a rating and um, subscribe if you haven't already. This is a weekly event and until next time, I hope you have a beautiful week.